Welcome everybody to CLUSA's uh, webinar training. My name is Michael Chang. I'm the executive director of APALI, which stands for Asian Pacific American Leadership Institute. And I uh, want to welcome you to the first of our free uh, webinars that you will be uh, participating in. I want to thank you in uh, advance. I want to uh, hope that uh, we will have very good sharing uh, in these webinars, and that uh, you will find both inspiration, support, uh, sharing, and useful ideas uh, for your internship program. So our first one is today. I just actually want to thank our team. We have a little team that's been working on this for, it feels like a month at least. Um, so Ching Bai is actually very good at moving our team and organizing and a lot of the uh, work uh, behind the scenes. Uh, I want to also thank our, our speakers today, uh, Andrea Hyde from Aki, uh, Hong Chil from Ohio, Apapa, and they will be speaking uh, to us today. So the theme for today is what is an ideal uh, public sector internship? Oh, thank you. Um, and so the idea here is um, if we could go on to the, let's try this, yeah. What is an ideal, right? Just something to, for us all to think about. What would a really ideal one uh, have? What are the components? And you can think of this as uh, stimulate your thinking. Uh, you can think of this as whether it is in line with what you're doing already. Uh, are there things that you could improve on? Or if you're starting out, uh, this might be a good checklist of things to consider, right? So the agenda for today uh, is um, I'm going to be giving a short 20-minute uh, 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 little uh, my take about what are the components of a uh, ideal public sector uh, internship program, right? And then after that, we'll have a little bit of time just to see if there are any clarifying questions, and then we will go to our share uh, from our uh, different uh, groups. So uh, Andrew Hyde is going to go first, and then Hong Chiu from uh, Papa, Ohio, will also share their valuable experience. And so the idea here is to be as real as possible, right? And then after that, it will be your turn to share. And I would especially like to direct your sharing in a couple of ways. Um, one is how do you uh, recruit, especially college students? So. Uh, if you folks have experience recruiting college students, um, please share that because that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then uh, the second thing that we'd like you to share is about your uh, efforts, um, you know, uh, creating internship placements in the public sector, which is the government sector. And so some folks have been doing this for many years. You've got great stories. You've got things that... Uh, placements that other people may not even have thought of. Uh, so at that point, I'd especially like you to uh, share about those, as well as any other questions that you might have. So um, moving along, I let's so this is the, um, the, the two components, right, that I would like to uh, suggest today as uh, must-haves for your, for an ideal uh, public service internship. Uh, first component has to do with your own organization. How do you organize it? How do you get your people together? How do you, what are some assets that you might have uh, for your program? And so uh, that I put it under program design. So there are five components under program design. Uh, we're going to talk mostly about the four of them. And then the fifth one, we're going to save for specialized webinar uh, later on, right? So the first one is what's your program concept? And I'm a believer that uh, if you know what you're doing, you should be able to say it in one sentence. So you should be able to communicate what your program is to anyone, right, in just one sentence. And what would that sentence be, right? How would you craft it? And how much of an identity that you would give to that? That will give you a direction and it will communicate to uh, different people. It will communicate to students, it will communicate to um, 
government agencies, it will communicate to the community what you are about. A second one is uh, organization and communication platforms. And I just want to put that in, is how do you get organized? And the area of organization that I want to especially push is online organizing. So for instance, today, we're using technology, right? Uh, all the uh, grantees are throughout the United States. Uh, it costs lots of money and also a lot of valuable time on everybody's part if we have to get together physically. So we're learning to work smart. How do we maximize working online in terms of meetings? Today we're using Zoom, right? Uh, teleconferencing and other tools to get organized. Um, third is sharing a calendar, different kinds of calendar. It might be an administrative calendar in terms of how uh, your organization is going to get organized, an uh, internship calendar, which you share with the intern. And then finally, a whole community development and empowerment. Right? So this piece is very important. So the vision of Sandy Chow is to support your community organizations. Right? Uh, your community organizations typically has a purpose of empowering uh, Asian American voice and civic engagement. So Sandy says, well, let's put both of these together. Uh, it's a very good to have a uh, training opportunities for students, especially in government, public sector. And then it's also very important to uh, help our communities or help your communities become empowered and become part of the governing process and part the government process. We use the civic leadership training program for students as a way to galvanize your community. So we want to spend a whole seminar, uh, one of our webinars, to have you share your experience galvanizing your community, whether it be uh, finding placement, coming together, working on a project together, uh, fundraising, all those different components. So that is the first part uh, about program design. The second part will have to do with student interns themselves. So this is the bottom line. And we're doing this, right? A large part of it is really the students. And so we're very uh, deliberate. We want to have everybody become very conscious of what they're doing, very knowledgeable about what they're doing, because it's a huge investment of your time and your resources and your effort on the students. So we want you to have be as successful as possible. And so, um, so under that, we have four parts. The first part are the placements. You know, what are the kind of public sector government placements do you have, right? What are possible? Uh, second one, who are the students that, that you should be recruiting? Uh, and, and, and how would you go about recruiting that? So it's important for you to have that on your checklist and to be able to improve from year to year about that. And thirdly, a very important thing is what are the outcomes of the intern, right? What, what, what do you list as outcomes? Uh, do you, wh what do you want them to say or get aw go away after they finish their internship? And then finally, what would your training for them be? And because that's a big topic, again, we will have a whole webinar just to focus on uh, intern training and have you share your experience training uh, your students. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with just a few words about uh, them. So um, the first one is program uh, design, right? So the first one is the concept. I, so I mentioned one, uh, one sentence. So I just made up this sentence, right? Okay, um, so this sentence that I have is just an example, uh, and it's, I'll just read it, a summer student public service, government service internship program for Silicon Valley with an Asian American community empowerment approach. So you can tailor this to your own needs, right? But what you have in this sentence is a time, right? Is this a year-round internship? Most of the internships, because of the students' Uh, calendar, it's usually in the summer, so it mentions the summer uh, time. Uh, it's for students, right? 
uh, public uh, service, uh, or government service, uh, internship. So it, 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 it talks about it, and it's not uh, other kinds of internship. There are many kinds of internships, but this one is a public service internship and gives it a location. So we're here, so I would say Silicon Valley. So Hong Chiu is in Ohio, so I'm sure Hong Chiu will say Ohio, or maybe a city in the whole Ohio, or a region in the Ohio. And then the last part uh, is just additional identification if you want to, right? Uh, if you want to promote it as a community thing, then I would say an Asian American community empowerment approach. So the idea here is that it serves dual purpose, is to train the students, but it also builds up our community, gives us a project that we could uh, work together and, and use this project as a springboard to get our community more organized, more engaged, more empowered, more um, so on. Okay, so the next one I want to mention is organization and communication. And many of you have done this for many years. You already have this. But as we all know, the trend is towards uh, uh, organizing online. So for instance, my own uh, organization, Apali, all our meetings are online, <laughs> right? Online is very good. So for instance, we're using uh, you know, uh, video conferencing now uh, with a platform called zoom.com. Um, you can look into that, it's great. I love this because not only do we actually see each other and we don't have to spend half an hour, one hour traveling to meet, but we could just jump online. We could do it, you know, daytime. A lot of us are volunteers. We work, and so we could just jump on at night, you know, and then we could do that. And the best part is that we can share documents right on there. We could share the screen, and we can work on each other's documents. So it is so useful. That's the main tool that we use. We hardly have face-to-face -face meeting. We only save those for retreats, but most of the, once we get things done, we just go on and do it like this. So I am a real believer in a, this kind of online conferencing meeting for organizing, and, um, and of course I'm not just selling from the platform I know, but there are other platforms, but Zoom is definitely a very decent platform. We also use a lot of Google, um, sites for different things. So um, it's really useful to have websites, right? So uh, a lot of you are familiar with websites. You can put all kinds of things for your interns on the website, right? You just ask them to go to the website. You can put documents you need for them. You could put the calendar there. You could use the website for all the things that, that, that you want to. So we use a Google site for our website, and we have a back end also uh, for that, for organizing. And then uh, Google Drive, this is just where we do our filing. All our filing is online, and that's where we do our sharing uh, there too. And uh, Google Forms is great for surveys. After every program we do, we always have a survey, an evaluation and feedback. And it's very useful. You know, you know, you can do it simply as on a scale of one to five, or you know, five being uh, extremely, four being very, how useful has this program been for you? And then you can ask for comments, you can ask for feedback. This is a quick, easy way to do it, either when everybody's around. By the way, uh, today after this webinar, you will also have an opportunity, and that you will be asked to um, join us in a quick um, survey for this webinar. Has it been useful? Did you get more information? Did you get more inspired? Are there things you could use? And that way, it gives us uh, a sense of uh, whether we are um, making a difference in what we do. Uh, last thing that I want to mention uh, is a application uh, platform. So um, Apali typically does all its applications online, and the one that we use is called JotForm. It's very good. It's an online platform, and, um, and, and once you set it up, people just apply to uh, that uh, for that. So, uh, so, um, so these, this is the organizations. I've 
focus on the online aspect of that. If you're interested, uh, need more information, you can you know, go on and find out more. Most of these are even free. So, um, so something to consider if you've not used it and something that we are all learning. At least I've learned a lot about these in the last three to five years when we've been using these in earnest. And I certainly could recommend that without hesitation. And then, of course, you know, organizations also need physical venue when you bring the students together, uh, when you do your graduation celebration. And so those are all just part of the uh, organization. Organization, of course, is also the team that you will bring together. Do you have, what's the sponsoring organization? Let's say you're Papa Ohio. Uh, how, how does that organization support the internship uh, program? Uh, is it more like a working group? Is it more like a committee? Uh, and how do the uh, internship leaders uh, fit into that program? So uh, you want to have that infrastructure uh, to support this program in order for it to go further. And of course, for the internship program itself, it has minimally two leaders, right? One is the organizing leader. And in our mind, the organizing leader is the person that is especially in charge of kind of the outside in terms of getting placements, getting the uh, graduation dinner, just thinking of all these connective parts. That's the organizing leader. The student training leader uh, works closely with the students, right? Really uh, have a relationship with the students. And, and, uh, and make happen all these training activities. So the two leaders can, of course, uh, share roles, right? One would be a lead for each, and the other person might be supportive. So there are many ways that you can uh, organize this for yourself. First thing I want to mention very briefly would be uh, calendars. Uh, useful to have an administrative calendar. So I'm showing an example of a calendar. Your calendar is going to look different from this, and I think some of our, our folks that are sharing today will share their calendar, right? So this is the one for uh, one of our programs, a poly program, and it shows all the usual stuff. When is it open? When, when, when does the internship close? When's the deadline? And so on. The next calendar that I'm showing now is the intern calendar. And this is really facing the students. The students will use this calendar, and we make them commit to this calendar before we even hire them, right? And so we say, hey, these are the training days. These are the service days. These are the uh, other days that we need you there. And so that's the training calendar. You will have a different training calendar. You will have training calendar including the intern graduations and other key dates that you need the uh, interns to be there. And sometimes your calendar might be physical. We need to meet here because we're going to do an activity, right? We were going to do a simulation or we're going to do some role playing. That we're going to role play uh, working in an office, right? Or we're going to just do this, do that. So you need physical people to do that. Others, you can just do online. And so you might mention what those look like. All right. So uh, next one to finish the program design component would be the community development and empowerment uh, part, right? So this is, again, this is your, uh, your support group, right? Your sponsoring organization, right? Are there other people in your sponsoring organization that's going to help this internship, right? And what are the main purpose? The ones that I could think of would be these, right? To develop connections and relations to public government sector. So different people will know different people. Different people will go say, hey, let me work on that connection. Let me do this, right? Some people might step up and say, hey, I can help with getting some people to sponsor our program, right? I can mobilize ourselves to also put in some resources to support these programs. So second one would be fundraising, right? A third one would be this graduation event, right? It's a graduation event 
and it's meant for the students, but it's a way to showcase your community project. So it can have many sides to it. It's a celebration, it's got a social side, it's got a community building side. Heck, it, it might even have a political side. It's to let people know that where you're here, who you invite there, and how do you uh, place this uh, so that your program and your community will be stronger through this very public event, right? And so on. All right, so that would be it for the program design part. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the student interns. So um, the first piece is just placement. So to be clear, this is a public sector or public slash government sector uh, internship program. What it is not is not a community internship program. It's not a, um, uh, a leadership internship program, right? But it's a public sector, which means that you help students. So the rationale there is understandable. Uh, all our groups say that, hey, Asian Americans are still outside looking into government, right? We need people, more people to understand government, to work in government, to be in decision-making process, right? To engage in government and become whatever, uh, government officials, elected uh, officers, and so on. So your uh, internship program is to help these young people to inspire them to either work or somehow uh, engage in government during their life, right? So that's why you want to put them in a government agency to, in order to do that, all right? So uh, the kind of uh, placements typically uh, fall under a few categories. Uh, one big category, the biggest probably, is elected office, and there are many levels. So we're going to hear some people talk about their successful experience about, oh, putting somebody in a federal or state representative's district office, right? Um, uh, a lot of these offices uh, have staff, and they are geared up already to do internships. So you just need to present yourself properly, right, and develop those relationships, and, and then they could uh, give you placements, and you might have an understanding. Each year we will send one person to your office, right, or two persons to your office, right? Most of these are local level. Sometimes it might be at the state capital, right? Uh, so there are many possibilities. So those are, are one. And then the local office holders, so depending on your situation, you might think of local office holders. Local office holders, especially the ones that have staff, would be your target, right? A lot of uh, local office holders are volunteers. They do other things during the day, and they don't have staff. So, um, so you want to target the people who actually have staff. So for instance, in our area, in Silicon Valley, um, the city where people would have staff would actually be San Jose City. They all have staff, and um, so they have an infrastructure to support internships. So that's the one that we would go to. But don't just limit yourself to cities. So there might be county uh, elected office positions, right? There might be others uh, uh, that you might consider. So the um, second area might be just government agencies. So for instance, you might uh, get to know city hall in a city and say that, oh, you have a planning department or you have a community development uh, uh, department. Uh, can we send an intern? What are your criteria? And you can work with that. Uh, you might even work with the city manager's office to take an intern, right, to help them with certain projects, right? So you want these to be good placements, right, where students are there to do real things and have exposure minimally to things, to decision-making, research, or just getting a sense of that. So uh, government services, uh, will be agencies and including uh, special districts. Maybe here, um, it might be a water district. It might be a sanitation district. So there are many districts that actually have budgets and actually some of them have internship programs. And if not, you can always approach them and say, hey, what about somebody taking on 
an intern uh, this summer. We could send you somebody really quality, and let's see how it works, and you talk to them right there. Uh, one last area that was actually mentioned as we discussed when we're planning this, we're planning this, Hong mentioned, well, what about uh, the judiciary? So that's something that you might consider too, right? Uh, many aspects of the judiciary. Uh, it might be working in the attorney general's office, as working at the uh, public defender's office as an intern. Uh, or maybe, uh, maybe even judges, there's a place for that. So again, as long as it's government, uh, you see what your conditions are, and it never hurts to ask and build those conditions, and you want to see in your community who are people who can help you uh, with this. Okay, uh, next would be targeting students. So if you're thinking that uh, you want students, so a poly, for instance, we've evolved. We've been around for over 20 years. And over time, we paid more and more attention <laughs> to students who are more likely to stay in the public sector, right? That will actually use this experience. Because we spend so much time investing in them, right? That we want them just not to say, oh, that was kind of OK. That was a good experience. Yeah, but you know, I, uh, you know, that's not really something that I would look into. So that would not be a you know, high potential. So what you want to do, as even though this is very long term, you want to attract the attention right, and the needs of students who are actually interested in government, interested in policy, interested in the public sector. And you want to each year be able to identify these targeted students. Um, so in our experience, uh, it's very important to recruit uh, college students. So I know a lot of programs uh, uh, recruit uh, college students who can share their experience. We're going to ask them to share their experience. How do they recruit college students? The reason with college students is simply that they are more certain about the direction that they are going. Right. They are already taking things like, oh, I'm a political science major, right? Uh, I'm interested in policy. I'm an Asian American studies major. I'm already interested in that. And so uh, the more you can talk to that kind of students, the more likely those students will have outcomes that says that they're going to do something with this, right? Uh, and, and we'll talk more about that. It's a harder than recruiting high school students, right? But um, that's something you should really uh, focus on. So I want to just say uh, something about uh, outreach for college. So as I mentioned, the programs that you want to focus on are areas such as political science. So you might develop a relationship, right, with your local colleges or through your network to identify who, wh what, what, students are majoring in. For instance, you might use your network through your parents to say, oh, is, does anybody have children that are majoring in you know, political science or the uh, humanity? Or maybe they're science. They want to be a doctor, but they're very policy oriented. They want to be, but they're very interested in science policy. So you might put them like that. A lot of this recruitment is very targeted. If you find someone, you just send them a friendly email and say that, hey, you know, we've been told that this is your major. Uh, this is something that you should really check out. Uh, we're looking for really good candidates, and we think you might be a good candidate. So a lot of times, it's word of mouth as you develop how do you target better and better. Do. So you can ask people to nominate. Uh, Polly used that tremendously. We just send out emails to lots of people. We tell them the criteria. We want, uh, this is a government internship program. We want college students. We want, especially if they are interested in policy, in government, or, or, or these kind of majors. And we ask people, if you know anyone, please nominate them. Send them an email with this application and just CC me, and then uh, we will follow up. So uh, the other thing you can do with college uh, recruitment is that you can directly uh, develop relationship 
with college professors. You can find out who teaches political science, uh, who teaches Asian American studies in the college and universities around you, right? You can ask them to push your uh, announcements, right? You can ask them to nominate. You can develop a relationship. You might go say, hey, I want to visit you on campus to establish a relationship with you. And every year, can I just send this to you? Now you know me. And this is a great opportunity for your students. Some of your students will very be very interested in this, right? And you just let them know a little bit, and then you just uh, do it like that. So college recruiting is not easy, honestly. Uh, a little bit uh, harder than just recruiting from your friends, parents, or your own children, and so on. But it has a ability to target students who are really interested in government a little bit better, right? And hence, the long-term returns to your internship is greater. High school outreach, you're probably much more knowledgeable about that. Uh, one thing I would mention is that you can also identify uh, teachers, especially in high schools, especially the ones that teach leadership. Many high schools teach leadership, right? Uh, you can uh, identify the ones that teach um, American history, American government, and ask them to make nominations. You can go to your community groups to ask them to make this kind of nomination. So, so three areas of recruitment, college, high school, and community. I don't want to talk about community too much because I think you have already a lot of ideas how to promote that. Okay, uh, briefly about uh, intern outcomes. So these are the outcomes that I would suggest for your program, right? So the two highest outcome in the end, one is to inspire your students, right? And to prepare them to understand how they could prepare for a career, right? In civil service or as a legislative staff or an elected official, right? Okay, so first of all, they get need to be turned on to these and say, hey, I can see myself as an elected someday, right? Oh, I can see myself. I didn't know what government jobs are like. Now I kind of know what government jobs are like. I, I like to do that. I like to serve people through that, right? And so, uh, so that's number one, a career, right, in government in some ways, right? The second one, not a career, but citizen engagement. They should come out of your program thinking that, oh, wow, down the road, I don't mind. I, I like to involve, be involved in government. I like to uh, do that. I like to, um, I know what a commission is. There are city commissions, there are county commissions. There are voluntary organizations. And well, when I grow up, I guess, or <laughs> when I'm even in college, if it's possible, I don't mind applying to one and see what it's like. So those are volunteers. And I put sometimes running for office uh, under that volunteers because, as you know, a lot of uh, local government office, whether it be school boards, uh, local city governments that are not these major big cities, are really more like volunteer jobs. So you want to uh, inspire your students as well as your community to say that those are things we think about. Those are things that we feel we can do. We have a right to be engaged, that we are good enough to represent people and want to do that. So I imagine those should be your most important uh, outcomes, right? Uh, other outcomes would be see how government works, how public policy works, how public decision making works, right? And then another piece that I think is important that we always find that students care so much about. And most of our organizations are Asian American organizations of various kinds, which is how does our community fit into this, right? Why, how does it matter to us? So somehow an outcome for your students, I want to challenge you, is somehow through your internship program, they learn more about Asian American history. Right? A lot of times they don't know very much. 
honestly, a lot of us uh, uh, coming as immigrants, we have to read up on things like that. But it's really not that hard, right? To have to show them timelines and histories of Asian Americans, and then uh, and then promote discussions of how do you feel as a Asian American? Uh, how do you look at your own identity? Do you feel? Do you like being Asian? Right? What what are the needs of our community? What will, how do you see yourself? And it's very they they really appreciate it when you have that kind of platform for them to explore who they want to be, how they want to treat their ethnicity. Is that something they w- would be ashamed of, or would it be something that they uh, would relate to? And how do they relate? It's a very rich area that we could talk about when we do student training more. And then, of course, the other things that I'm sure that you do, how do they present themselves right, as young adults right, uh, in this public sector? right? How do they develop relationship with people? How do they go outside their comfort zone to talk to people, to take initiative, to make people respect them, to take on tasks and follow through? Okay, so that's basically it. Um, The internship training, I won't say anything uh, because um, we're going to have a whole webinar on that. Uh, Again, it's the same areas that we talked about, Asian American identity, Asian American demographics and issues, how you you surface those things, what do you do in terms of uh, office training, what do you do in terms of leadership training, what kind of civic engagement uh, activities that you engage them in. So um, I think I've gone more than my time, but I hope that uh, that was useful. So um, um, looking at the time, we're going to just delay the Q&A for this part uh, to the general Q&A later, right? And that way we could give time uh, for you to participate.